I thought it would be nice for you to come along in a passenger ride in the M3 to kind of give you maybe youngsters and some of you that aren't so familiar with this car um, an idea of why it's so awesome. Um, so it's half warm, half warmed up at the moment. Let's give it a start. You have to put it in zero um, every time you have to knock it over. Hold the brake. Um, it takes a little bit longer to start than a regular automatic car, but it's not really a big deal. Knock over the first. It mine's got the CSL gearbox, so it's got the later revision software, so it always starts in automatic. Um, so you have to knock it over to S uh, to make it manual. Uh, here we go. Now, like a, a manual car, it rolls back. It really is a manual car. It is not an automatic. I mean, you can use the automatic gearbox mode, but it's absolutely useless, and it'll do your head in. So I always drive it in manual with the paddles, or sometimes if my hands are, uh, you know, halfway around the wheel, I'll use the gear stick. And it's back to change up and forwards to change down, which is so awesome because so many cars have it the other way around. And there's been a few occasions where I have um, changed down sort of up because my head's wired up that way. Um, it's a smooth car, but it's, it is bumpy. And now that's my fault because I have massive wheels, low profile tires, they're very wide, and I've got a lower suspension. But overall, it's not too bad. Um, do not go into this thinking it's a comfortable car. Um, it's not. It is a sports car, and it behaves like a sports car. So it is the it is the complete opposite of my 35D, which is soft and comfortable. Um, it is quite hardcore. Um, having driven the competition package M3, that is very similar to my 335 35D. Um, it's a lot softer than this. This is a more hardcore car, if that makes sense. Um, but anyway, pottering around in town, 2,000 RPM, it's fine, not that noisy, it's alright. Uh, most people wouldn't bat an eyelid at it, that's fine. When you put your foot down, it booms a bit, again that's my fault, I put an exhaust on it. But saying that, the original exhaust also had that kind of tone, um, just less drone. Um, it's got my lovely Alcantara wheel. Um, so yeah, third gear, 30 mile an hour, it's about 2,000 RPM. I mean, you can change it to fourth, I'll do that now. And it's at 1,500. Yeah, still it still pulls, it's still fine. Um, I was incorrect earlier when I said 250 foot pounds. It's actually about 267 or 269. Um, put back in the third. Um, not too bad, right? Enough torque for a road car, anyway. Um, oh, why is this person, that's naughty. Very naughty. Um, the, the throttle response is just sublime. And that's to be expected. It's naturally aspirated, individual throttle bodies. It's very mechanical. And it is just wonderful. Um, having driven turbocharged cars for the past, I don't know, seven years, it's a wonderful change. Um, you have to drive one yourself to know what I mean. If you've driven an old car that was naturally aspirated, you know what I mean. Um, very crisp, very sharp. There's a sport mode, but it's just useless. Don't use it, it's horrible. It is so sharp as standard, you do not need that button. Um, I drive around in SMG4, so there's, there's five modes available. However, if you press the traction control button, there's a secret sixth mode, um, which is incredibly savage, and you just feel very guilty every time you use it. Um, however, you have to turn off traction control and put it into SMG6 mode in order to use launch control, and my god, launch control's awesome in this. This is a proper launch control. Remember, this is a manual car, just with a hydraulic clutch. It's got a, it's like a hydraulic, clutch with a, a computer controlling it. Full on manual. Um, 
anyway, the launch control on this is fully controllable. You know, you can launch it free, three and a half, four, as soft or as hard as you like. It will just dump the clutch and off you go. Um, in order to do that, uh, DSC off, foot on the brake, hold forwards, which is minus on the gear stick, and then plant the throttle. And then just release whenever you want. And it goes. And it goes. Oh boy. Tire smoke everywhere. It's just a wonderful thing to do. Um, and it's so controllable. This, this old boy can't drive. It's so controllable, this car. When, when you get it into a slide or you kind of lose it, when I say lose it, you know, when the back end kind of steps out. Now, in a lot of cars, modern cars, you've lost it. We're going to have to overtake this guy. So that's kind of like the midway speed. If we put it into five. Ready? Oh, it's too much. It's too aggressive. It, it kicks you in the back and you can feel that thud uh, from the diff at the back. Um, SMG4 is just, that's the one. Um, it down changes. That's my CSL software. that fast compared to modern cars okay it's not it doesn't have that whoomph of torque it's not that flexible um, but it's just joyous to drive it really is you just you don't care that it's not that fast because it it's so ridiculous the way it delivers its pack it's savage really savage oh, I need to Clunky diff. I don't know if you can pick that up. <laughs> you just don't care. You don't care that a Golf GTI will beat it. You don't care. You just don't care. You're having so much fun in this. It just, oh, I can't explain it. It gives you goosebumps every time you take it to red light. It sounds so good and you can feel the engine working and it has a power band like a two-stroke like a two-stroke motorbike where when you get to about four and a half thousand rpm it goes mental the the exhaust note changes and it just it's obviously the vanos and it just opens up and it, it screams all the way through in fact there's actually three stages to the delivery of the power um, at about 2,000, low 2,000s, you get like a hit, you get like a slug of torque, which is 260 foot pound, and that holds flat across pretty much the whole rev range. Um, then you get another kick at four and a half, and when you get to about six and a half, seven, that last little hit it just keeps pulling even more, and that's when uh, peak power comes in. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, peak power is basically at, well, 8,000 RPM. And in this car, 8,000 RPM feels like 11,000 RPM just by the exhaust note. The, uh, the high-pitched scream that it gives out makes it sound like it's higher revving than it really is. And it's such a, the S54 is such a sweet engine. It's buttery smooth and then it's also completely bonkers. Um, the V8 that followed as well was a great engine, but I just didn't like the car it was bolted into as much. Um, and I prefer the sound of the straight six. It's a great, great engine. Three and a quarter litres. It's not particularly big. No turbos. Nothing. No boost. Naturally aspirated. Individual throttle bodies. I'm repeating myself, I know. But it's just wonderful. And it will forever go down as one of the best driver's cars ever made. <laughs> and you take it to these B roads and 
It's a shame there's so much traffic, but you can see why. The communication through the steering wheel is on another level compared to modern cars. There's no feel on a modern car. It's electronic, and they've gotten better, but they just never will have what this has. It speaks to you. I can feel every crevice, every ripple in the road, everything. I can feel it, and I know exactly what the car is doing. Um, a little secret, if you want a smoother gear change, you just let off the throttle a little bit on the gear change, just a little bit, and then up change. And it, it's a little bit slower, but it's a bit smoother. Um, all the gear change I was doing back then at wide open throttle, that was my foot pegged to the floor. Um, as I said, it's a sports car, so the bumps are bumpy. I can't put my finger on what it is specifically about this car because there's negatives as well. The brakes are shite. Um, there's no, there's no going around that. They, they are rubbish brakes. So my foot down there, and it, it doesn't really pick up to about 3k. It doesn't like being below 3k. Um, but then, you know, from 3k onwards, it's all that power. You know, all the way up to 8,000. So it's a very flexible engine considering it's so highly tuned. If you get into like a, a Honda VTEC, like a K20, or B16, or B18, they are absolutely dead below five and a half. Dead. I've driven one. They are dead. Very slow. You have to rev the crap out of them. Yes, you have to rev the crap out of this, but it does have torque. But I guess that's because it's three and a quarter liters. I say three and a quarter because that's what it is. It's three two fifty, three thousand two hundred fifty cc. A little bit bigger than the E thirty six M three Evo before it, just a tiny bit. And with uh, a more sophisticated Vanos system, which is why it's got a little bit more torque. Now the sun's really glaring off my Chinese sat nav, which doesn't work. If anyone knows what sat nav this is, please tell me because. I need the, the GPS doesn't work, and I need an SD card for it, and I need to load it with software, and I don't know what software I need. It does pick up, it's sharp, very crisp. Um, MPG is not bad, I get about 28, actually I've been hooning it around a bit, 24, but that's over like 150 miles. Alright, let's have a pull. M division at its best other than the brakes I mean they don't feel or sound good at all I need to get that back there anyway so I, I think that kind of gave you an idea why it's so great hopefully the mic picked up all that wonderful noise um, I didn't have the window down it's just a cracking car it really is I'm, I'm quite fortunate, I have a few toys, and this is the one I want to drive. Even though it's fairly uncomfortable and drinks a lot more fuel than my 35D, and the 35D is a hell of a lot faster than this, I'm not going to lie. The 35D will absolutely decapitate this thing. But bored out of my mind driving that. It's just effortless, quiet, and just dull. This. Even if you're going slower, you know, you're 8,000 RPM and you just got a massive smile on your face. They don't make these anymore. And the, one, the good ones are dying out. A lot of them are rusting or falling to bits or being wrecked or crashed or turned to track cars. And already these are starting to climb up. People are asking £20,000 for a, a 50,000, 30,000 mile one owner. I wouldn't ever buy one of those. It's not worth it. They need to be used. They need to be driven. I'm happy to buy a 100,000 mile 10 owner car as long as it's been looked after. Um, they are quite reliable. They only have trivial little things that go wrong with them. 
All right, guys. Yep, yeah, I hope that was somewhat educational. Most of you know a lot about these anyway. <laughs> oh, the downshift. 